To acquire our food, we need space. We cultivate large swaths of land with rows of plants that we harvest for food. We raise animals that need large amounts of land on which to graze. When we move to live close by in towns and cities, we need to outline whose space is whose so we can build houses and do our work. In order to use the land around us, we need a way to count our land. How did humans first figure out a way to do this? We'll find out here today on Inductica. Unit 1.33, Measurement of Area. Motivation 1. In the farmland around Metrios' city, farmer Alfion has decided to give up farming and pursue a more lucrative profession in the city. Alfion solicits another farmer, Betacles, for interest in purchasing Alfion's plot, telling Betacles of his plot's size and abundant barley yields. Alfion boasts that his plot fits a hundred rows of barley and asks Betacles to buy the land for five ingots of copper. On the road to inspect Alfion's plot, Betacles notices a different farmer, Gamma Memnon, working his plot adjacent to Alfion. Gamma Memnon, too, wants to sell his land and calls Betacles over. Gamma Memnon delivers a similar speech to what Betacles heard from Alfion on how abundantly Gamma Memnon's plot produces barley and the hundred rows of barley it encompasses. Gamma Memnon asks Betacles to buy his land for five ingots of copper. Betacles now has two offers of sale for the same amount of copper and must choose between them. Gamma Memnon's plot does appear to be the same number of rows by eye as Alfion's plot, but there is some inconsistency in the way the rows start and end on each farmer's plot, and Betacles wants to get the plot with the greatest amount of land, regardless of how it is plowed, for his purchase. So Betacles goes to Metrios, now renowned for his work on measuring lengths and weights, and asks, Question 1. How can he measure the quantity of land in these two fields? Investigation 1. Metrios comes to the plots with Betacles and confirms Betacles' judgment that while the number of rows in Alfion's and Gamma Memnon's plots looks the same, the lengths of the rows of Alfion and Gamma Memnon are not clearly the same throughout, meaning there could be a difference in the size of the two plots. Metrios lays two standard forearm poles down between the rows at about a separation of a standard forearm to check the evenness of the spacing of the rows, and he notices that the edges of the two rows and the two standard forearm poles form a square. Looking down between the rows, Metrio suddenly pictures squares of standard forearm poles that he can count all the way down the rows to see how many fit. Then, by counting all of the squares between the rows, he has a solid way to compare the sizes of Alfion's and Gamma Memnon's plots, since all the squares made in this way are the same size. Metrios returns to his workshop and fastens four standard forearm poles into a square, which he then returns to the farmer's plots to count the number of squares on each plot to relate to Betacles the size of each plot. Now Metrios has a way to communicate to all plot buyers the size of a plot and thus its potential value to the buyer, irrespective of an individual farmer's efficiency at working the land. Conclusion 1. Counting squares of the same size across a plot determines its area and allows for straightforward comparison of plots. Motivation 2. Metrios carefully uses his forearm squares to begin measuring the areas of plots. As his count gets into the hundreds and thousands, Metrios begins to wonder, question 2, is there a way he can get the total number of squares without directly counting each individual square? Investigation 2. Metrios looks out and considers the squares that go down between the rows of barley. Although the rows don't exactly line up from start to end, he has found that they are the same total length of about 100 standard forearms. Metrios knows that he has to count the same 100 forearms for each row, and then recalls that when you have to add the same amount, the number of squares down a row, a certain number of times, the number of rows, this is just multiplication. Conclusion 2. The product of the number of squares down the row with the number of rows is the area of the plot. Metrios realizes that he needs a name for the number of squares down the row to keep it distinct from the number of rows or number of squares that fit between the rows. He calls the number of squares along a row the plot's length, and the number of rows or the number of squares fitting between the rows at the starting end of the rows the plot's width. Metrios completes his count of rows and checks the length of rows in each plot to determine that Alfion and Gamma Memnon, despite their slightly uneven row ends, both have 10,000 square forearm plots. Betacles decides to accept Alfion's offer and purchase his plot. Gamma Memnon then sells his 10,000 square forearm plot to a different farmer, 
Theltocrates. Motivation 3. Using Metrios's discover of area and its unit, the square forearm, farmers begin counting their plots with objective knowledge of quantifying land area. Very quickly, farmers tire of counting their plots in the hundreds or thousands of square forearms, and Metrios suggests the use of a longer unit he created for standard wall size, the rod, equal to 10 standard forearms. The square rod makes the counting of the area of large plots easier, and Metrios determines that the square rod encompasses 100 square forearms. However, because a square rod is a large and cumbersome object, Metrios instructs the farmers to lay out a rod along the length and then along the width of the plot to measure. Then, knowing that one rod length by one rod width is a square rod, the farmers can take the total number of rods on the length and multiply by the total number of rods on the width to get the area of the plot in the total number of square rods the plot covers. In a year of lower production, Betaclase becomes concerned that his recently acquired 10 square rod plot seems to underproduce, while his new neighbor, Deltocrates' 10 square rod plot with the same length and width seems to overproduce. Betaclase is upset that his production leaves him with noticeably less barley to trade and live off of than Deltocrates. So Betaclase requests Metrios' help to answer a question. Question 3. Can two plots with the same length and the same width have different areas? Investigation 3. Metrios visits the plots and notices that the dividing line between the plots veers to the left as he looks at it from one width side of the plot to the other width side. Metrios asks how the plot was measured and hears that a rope was measured by 10 turns around a rod. Concerned that this measurement by turns may have been miscounted, Metrios assembles 10 rods and placing them from end to end from the dividing line between the two plots, notices that the rods end to end deviate strongly from the left veering dividing line between the plots. Metrios then tries to follow the dividing line with rods, but the rods don't lie end to end. They have to be bent. Metrios realizes that if he makes the rods meet the two width ends of the plot, like corners of squares, then he divides the plot evenly. Whereas when the rods don't meet like a square, the squares that he was counting for the area by multiplying the length and the width get cut off by the dividing line and can't be added up through multiplication. However, with care, a rope can also be made to connect the two width ends like the corners of a square and thus get the same value as the end-to-end -end rods. Conclusion 3. To measure areas correctly, the length and the width must connect in a way that is squared off. Otherwise, the length and the width of the two plots may be the same, but the area they contain may not be. Motivation 4. Although Metrios discovers the reason Betaclase's plot is smaller, Deltocrates is not willing to move the plot dividing line to square off both width ends of the plot. So Betaclase wants to know how large his plot is so he can decide what his next step should be. He asks Metrios. Question 4. When there is a side of a plot that veers off, how does one count the area in the plot? Investigation 4. Metrios can count the squared off area of the plot using the usual rods coming into a square corner and does so, finding nine square rods of land for Betacles. Metrios has already measured that the longer width side fits one more rod of length and the shorter width side fits one less rod of length. Looking at the dividing line, Metrios wonders if this splits what would be a squared off pair of rows into two equal parts. If that is the case, then he should divide the 10 square rods that would fit into 5 for each plot. Metrios takes a square forearm on an unused piece of ground, measures off a square rod. Then he divides the square rod from one corner to an opposite corner, forming two triangles. Metrios counts the number of square forearms that fit evenly on each side, leaving a jagged, unmeasured area in the middle. And he finds that each side fits 45 square forearms. What remains in the jagged region are 10 square forearms evenly split by the dividing line. Together, 45 plus 45 plus 10 add up to the expected 100 square forearms of the entire square rod. Metrios notices that the 10 fill-in squares look evenly divided, and if he splits them into 5 each, then each triangular piece has 50 square forearms, exactly half of the total 100 square forearms. Now Metrios wonders, what happens if the plot has different lengths and widths? He takes half of his square rod so that the width of the half is 5 standard forearms and the length is 10 standard forearms for an area of 50 square forearms. From this he draws a dividing line from one corner to an opposite corner and again counts the square forearms that fill in each triangle. In this case, there are 20 squares clearly on each side of the triangle 
and 10 squares that are cut by the dividing line. Now the cut squares are not evenly cut down the middle as they were in the 10 by 10 case. However, the pairs of cut squares next to one another match up so that an equal amount of area appears on each side of the dividing line, implying that the area of an individual triangle on each side is 20 plus 5 or 25 square forearms, again, exactly half of the total 50 square forearms. Conclusion 4. The area of a triangle formed by cutting an area with squared off corners from one corner to an opposite corner equals half of the whole area, or half of the length of the area times its width. Metrios applies this to Betaclasis' plot to calculate that the triangle formed by the dividing line going through the 1 by 10 area equals 5 square rods, so Betaclasis' plot is 90 plus 5 or 95 square rods total. Motivation 5. Betaclasis wants to enlarge his plot on the length side away from the road that travels past his and Deltacrates' plots. There is some flat land bounded by two ridges, one that starts at the dividing line between his and Deltacrates' plot and goes back to six rods farther from the end of his current rows, and another ridge that goes from that point back to the end corner of the side of the plot. The two ridges do not meet like the corner of a square. Betacles asks Metrios to help him figure out how much area he would gain if he cultivated that area bounded by the two ridges and his existing plot side. Question 5. How does one determine the area of a triangle if none of the corners meet like the corners of a square? Investigation 5. Metrios remembers from his work with rectangular plots that in order for the area to be equal to the length times the width, the edges had to meet like the corners of a square. He draws a line from where the ridges meet over to the existing plot edge so that they form squared off corners. Looking at the two triangles formed by this new line, he sees that he now has two triangles that do have a corner that is squared off. One of the triangles has a width of two rods along the plot side, and the other triangle has a width of seven rods along the plot side. Calculating their areas, Metrios finds that the smaller triangle to be 1 half times 2 times 6, or 6 square rods, while the larger triangle is 1 half times 7 times 6, or 21 square rods. Adding the two together, Metrios gets 6 plus 21, or 27 square rods. Metrios recalls that each of these two triangles with squared off corners are halves of two larger rectangles that share the same length, 6 rods, but have different widths, 2 rods and 7 rods respectively. The area of these two rectangles together would be the sum of their widths, 2 plus 7 equals 9 rods, times their shared length, 6 rods, or 9 times 6 equals 54 square rods. The area of the original triangular plot extension is half of this rectangle. And Metrios suddenly realizes that for any triangle that doesn't have a corner that meets like a square, he can draw a new line from the one corner to the opposite side to meet like a square, and the resulting two squared off triangles will have areas that add up to half that line's length times the sum of their individual widths. So Metrios concludes, Conclusion 5. The area of any triangle equals half of the product of the length from one corner to the opposite side connecting like a square, and the length of that opposite edge. Inspired by the resemblance of a triangle to a mountain, Metrios names the squared off length to the corner the height of the triangle and the edge opposite this corner the base, so that he can remember that the area of a triangle is half its base times its height. Now Metrios has a way to calculate the area of any plot with straight edge borders. Find the areas of the squared off portions with length and width, and then the areas of the triangular portions with height and base, and then add the areas of all the parts. Closing. Going forward, Flat surfaces can be divided up into triangular and rectangular portions to find their area. However, not all things are flat, and we will discover that we need ways of quantifying how much space these non-flat things take up. We'll take this topic up in our next video on measurement. This video is part of a longer series dedicated to reproving the essential ideas of math and physics by showing an actual process of observation and reasoning steps scientists could have taken to prove these conclusions. Observational proofs, also known as inductive proofs, give us a deeper, reality-based understanding of these abstract ideas and demonstrate the proper method of scientific proof. This series starts with cavemen counting rocks and will continue all the way to the frontiers of quantum and relativistic phenomena. This epic story will proceed in a possible order of discovery since science always progresses by reasoning about observations using what has been discovered earlier. 
To discover the long-term goal and the true power of this project, visit my channel page for more information. To see the playlist for this series or to see my channel, just click on the links on the screen. Finally, if you'd like more lectures like this, just go to patreon.com slash inductica. For just $5 a month, you gain access to the written rigorous forms of these proofs, as well as my 34-hour lecture series, An Inductive Summary of Physics. I'll see you in the next video as this inductive journey continues.